And welcome back to the WGL EU Season 5 Match Week 9. We are into the final game of the day. We've had two already and one more to go. And I can promise you this is a good one. WSD Gaming up against GG Well Played. I, I think this is the game of the day that I've been waiting sure. for, to uh, say the least. Second against third place. I don't know what to think coming into this one. I just hope it's a little bit better than DRL TCM. Yeah, I, I <laughs> really do hope so as well. It's one of my favorite games this season. It's... Yep. Probably wasn't in the beginning because I didn't think WSD Gaming would be in second at this point. I agree. But it, it's second versus third, and they both have the same amount of points. So it's it's a big game, and I'm really interested to see what happens. Of course, GG Well played a fresh off their flight and their match they had in uh, China where they actually took third. Surprisingly, going down to, I think it was Elong, and Na'Vi managed to pick up the win there. Hmm. So they lost like 5-3 to three or 5-2 to two against Elong. I was like, whoa, Elong. Asia, Asia's coming, uh, Asia region is coming back big, guys. Look, in, look, out, look out for them in the grand finals because that was some impressive play from them all around. There you go. That's something to keep in mind. And maybe uh, forcing GG well played to play a little bit better. I don't know. You have to see how it affects them. Some teams would take that as you know, a downer. Some teams will make even harder work come off the back of it. However, GG well played will be facing off today, as we said, against WSD Gaming. And if you do want to get your votes through to us, there is, of course, the beautiful Melly to tell you how. Slash WGL EU. You should know the link by now. So, and um, just click the link in the first posting on our timeline, or click the little button right above the timeline that says Team Vote. Then you get forward to an app where you're kindly to, uh, kindly asked to like our page or to skip that step. I would recommend you liking our page because we're also um, sharing news which are really interesting on our uh, Facebook appearance. So you will be the first ones notified as soon as something happens in the WGL uh, universe. Also, the next step is uh, um, simply voting for your favorite team and then predicting the exact scoreline of this matchup. And by guessing right, you get the chance of winning one of five bonus codes containing 500 gold and seven days of premium. If you say you need more background info about maybe the rosters or the players on the teams and info about them, just head over to eu.wgleague.net and there you can find everything, pretty much everything. Right, Oli? Pretty much everything. Um, Hall of Fame, individual team stats, team Twitter, team Twitter, uh, Facebook, team YouTube, everything, yeah. Yeah, and also news. And one of the biggest announcements these days were the announcement of the location from the Grand Finals, which is Warsaw. We'll be back in Warsaw. I'm really looking forward to maybe joining that event. Don't, well, we I don't know. So. <laughs> yeah, we, none of us know, so we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. Not yet, Just send wise, Steven over there to do everything. He's, he's good at he's good at, yeah. at he's jumping positions, good. right? <clears throat> yes. Oh, wow, he could do everything. That's amazing. Yeah. He, he always does. He carries us through events. Pretty That's much. True. We love you. <laughs> anyway. And yes. No. Um, those uh, <laughs> news. Great news about everything. Maybe uh, team interviews in the near future, for example. So stay tuned. Follow us on Twitter as well. And by doing that, by putting a bookmark on our page, by f liking our Facebook page, and by following us on Twitter and uh, following the Twitch channel and, of course, uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel. Well, I think you're pretty much set up then. You, you can't miss anything. You will be um, will be up to par with every, every happening in the league. And that's beautiful because we do great content. <laughs> And you have to follow it, as simply as it is. So, um, also, besides the team vote, you can also share your opinion via Twitter by using the hashtag WGLEU. Share your opinion. We love reading from you. And sometimes I'm reading out tweets, so a bit of online fame is there in there as well. Awesome. Yeah. All worth getting involved for. So thank you very much, Melly. And the guys at home, well, you've heard it from Melly herself. Get involved. Do as she says. <laughs> otherwise, you'll be in trouble. Simple. But let's get back to the tanks, and uh, we can start talking about these two teams head-to-head. -head. Do we know what the first map is going to be? Yeah, we're going to be seeing again uh, Himmelsdorf. Oh, something on new. It's going to be three Himmelsdorf in a row. I don't know why. Is it going to be uh, Steps next? <laughs> it's going to be Steps. You got it correct. Wow, I'm very <laughs> on talented. On point. Yeah, nice analysis. Thanks, man. Um, I'm going to take your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ruster is as well, apparently. But um, Himmelsdorf <laughs> on defense first, and Steps also on defense is our next map after that one. Perfect. So. Two defensive rounds, it's the theme for today, 
defend, 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 defend. Mm -hmm. It see sounds marvellous. Yeah. I'm very excited to see Himmelsdorf. It's a map that none of us know. It's unknown. <laughs> it's, it's weird because we haven't really seen it that much. Until now. Until now. And it's just like, Himmelsdorf, here you go. <laughs> I don't know if people just feel more secure. I don't know why. It's more really just because why. they look at other teams and they see what other teams are doing. Yeah. And then they counter it. And if they can see a weakness, they pick the map. And also, got to remember, it's pick, ban, pick, ban, pick, ban. So the team on the left side gets to pick, uh, ban first. And it's you, you kind of cancel out the maps mm. until you have the last two left. So you got just a little bit of tactics, a little bit of um, mm. thought through. And it definitely makes a big difference. It's like pick and bans. I don't know how we always end on Himmelsdorf and then steps. <laughs> you know, I was, I was praying for variation. But then again, <clears throat> get to watch. Get we to might which, be seeing mine soon which? again. Really? Yeah, mine's is in back in Ooh. 754. Um, so, yeah, see how that one works out. Of course, it's in 9.6. Still have to get myself on that one and uh, see exactly if it's going to work. Because it's a really small map, but it could be a good thing, to be fair. That'd be awesome. Just, I think there might be a cap probably in the south base and then one in the middle. Kind of makes sense. Or just one on each base. It depends yeah. where the team spawn as well. So we see that changes now. Could be like, it can change. Yeah, exactly. One could be right, one could be left. Yeah. It's going to be really interesting. I, I love that as well. Also, Ghost Town, pretty good map. Might be using that. Mm -hmm. All these maps are up in the air for uh, 9.6, but it has to be a global decision. Yeah, and it'd be quite nice to have some fresh new maps. And obviously, Cliff was added not too true. long ago. Um, <coughs> good addition, I think, Cliff was. I think it's yeah. kind of fitted It's probably one of the better maps. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we're going to be looking through all the maps of how they work, talk to the teams, talk to everyone. Um, talk to the teams from the other regions, kind of sync up through all the regions and then decide, you know, okay, so for instance, I don't like Steps that much. Um, Himmelsdorf, I don't like that much. Of course, there's changes coming in the next patch in 9.6. That could make it more interesting, I have to see. Um, but yeah, like those two maps as well, Prokhorovka, not being a massive fan of, like a bit too slow, a little bit too Prokhorovka polarized. for me is probably the one that doesn't suit this game mode yeah. as much as the others. That even... Himmelsdorf being a city map, it still feels slightly more viable. And if it gets balanced even more, it could be good. Um, it could be well, better, at least. Um, steps can be quite interesting. It can be. There's a lot of variation there. It's always been quite the open map that yeah. allows for it. Yeah, and if you get different tank lineups, it's always good. Um, and I think I think Prokhorov can be replaced by Mines. I think it's about balance and it's about entertainment at the end of the day. What's the most fun to watch is also very important. <clears throat> and I think after the 11 draws, I, I just can never look at <clears throat> Prokhorovka the same. I hate, so. you know, the thing is, I actually hate Prokhorovka in random battles as well. <laughs> I mean, I used to work really weird. I used to like that map. Generally, I like the old maps because I've had a chance to play on. I mean, it's like in every other game, the more map times you play, even if it's a bad yeah. map, you get to appreciate it and you get to you know, be good at it. But Prokhorovka recently, I just don't like, unless I'm Doesn't in artillery. Yeah. No, it's just, yeah, it it's just dull because everyone's sitting around the middle until one team decides to go forwards and the team that decides to go forwards dies and loses. So It's pretty grim. No. Pretty grim. <laughs> No, Prokhorovka, I think, I, I think it's weird. It's gone from one of the most viable maps in our previous game mode to one of the ones that really doesn't suit it as much um, in this one. So I have to wait and see if, if maybe there's changes to be seen for it coming ahead or if it can be replaced by the eSports map, by mm. Mines, whatever, whatever it is. Mm. You know, there's a lot of maps up and coming. You guys at home, if you've got a favorite map that you'd like to see maybe brought to this game mode with the pros playing it, hashtag WGLEU on Twitter. Get involved. You guys aren't being involved enough. I think Dave Tomley is just spamming currently uh, <laughs> our Twitter. Shout out. <laughs> so it's, it's always Dave. Just, just Dave. <laughs> We've always got Dave. That's Big good. Dave. <laughs> good anyway. name. I like Dave. Dave's we need more Daves in the office. Yeah. We've really got really Alex. We've got Ollie. We've got Joe. We've got Lee. No Daves. No Dave. We've got Richie. <laughs> Alex Richie Richardson. Yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, if he ever has to come on the show again, I know he'd love it. He will be, be on the show. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Let's hope he. I think there's a chair over here. <laughs> yeah. Bring him back in for like when things analysis. go wrong. Just there yeah, we go. Anyway, yeah. that aside, hopefully everything is good. Everything is rolling, and the tanks are ready. Let's get into game and get this one underway. The tank lineups have been picked, and what do we make of this? So T37, again, um, it looks like WSD Game is kind of sticking to what other teams are doing as well. And obviously it's a good tank altogether yeah. to kills or, again, not being trusted in the big boys' tanks. Playing that T37, it's a joke, all right. I know he can play good tanks. It's a good damage dealer. Don't take it seriously. <laughs> the dead zone, uh, Killer Pit and Honor um, pushing over towards the right side and pretty much the rest of WSD Gaming are pushing over towards that right side as they do look towards to play that hill to play on that hill. You basically got the T37 to look up the eight line, seeing if any tanks are going up there. It's a very quick tank. If there isn't, the eight line is 100% viable and they're gonna push off that. And I think by this stage in the season, 
it's as much about catching the other team by surprise as it is about playing well. See if they can do, because look at this, to kill Zolt. That he got a little bit of a runabout. And not really finding much, and sometimes not finding much might be indicative there, and he's going to be heading back around maybe with the others and see what they can do here. But once again, Northeast play up against the Northwest play. It seems this is becoming more and more common. Certainly is. Um, Killip at Honor heading around, and they've predicted that GG well played uh, in those positions. I'm surprised that the IS3 again in A2. It didn't work in Dream Lake Forms versus TCM, and it didn't work before that when you, School Bus versus Utopia. So see how it works this time around. And if uh, WSD Gaming do see that weakness, then head up the three line to try and counter the lack of burst from the IS3. But so far, the tactic is obvious. And so they haven't been spotted because Gorni and Nervax, Haki, and the Dead Zone will head forwards into that cap. Killbit's done a good amount of damage. He's a fantastic player. A little bit standoff, a little bit like a new multi show of WSD Gaming. But nevertheless, a good player, and he will hit those shots. Let's see if he can. Look at the damage I've already. You can see how fairly close it is. Uh, HP wise, 9,530 for WSD Gaming. And for GG well played, not for 3k. It's strange. Once again, we're seeing this slightly drawn out play. I'm not sure what the end game's going to be here. If they're going to push one of the tanks into the camp, use it for cover, or if it is just an all in play to try and get some sort of presence around that 5A area, maybe be able to peek through to try and challenge international. Bounce comes through. Not going to find its way in there. No, um, I don't think they can. <laughs> expect to do reliable damage. But the thing is, because Nervax was spotted, you can see WSD get, um, GG well played are all ready and waiting to deal with him. And, uh, well, these two are pretty much, not guaranteed, but very likely to actually qualify. But Killer Pit just surging forwards. He's obviously made the flank around, and International does receive a big one, and Killer Pit trying to make another one. It's just great coordination from WSD Gaming. you got uh, Orgorni and Nervax getting the shells onto International. Then you got Killipit from the side who kind of fluffed his shot um, as soon as International starts to move. So great initial damage from WCT Gaming and it's given them a real opener into this game. Certainly has and waiting to see how they further that through. Killipit, fantastic angling here. Waiting. Pixel holds his nerve. As the cap will begin. He's holding the play to allow his teammates to get a little closer here. Hacky moves up a Gorni. Finds position and now international FC Dynamo meritorious and Ron gonna have to find a way back through and I'm not sure if they can here. It's very reminiscent of a Hellraiser's play. I would wonder if they're actually watching uh, GG, um, We Play or Hellraiser's because they're doing exactly that tactic. You got the T37 or the M41 doesn't really matter on the hill to basically provide support and also to be able to get to any part of the map very quickly. Um, also, if any of the GG World play players do decide to aim towards him, they're just wasting time because he can just reverse and get out of there putting the tanks in the cap. So at the moment, the Gaming are using their research and, and using their training to the best of their ability, and it's working quite well. They are starting to run out of time, though. If they don't be careful, one concerted effort by GG Well Played will force the reset, and they might not have enough time to continue their cap, and they'll be forced again to push forwards and to try and kill GG Well Played. 46 seconds. Waiting to see how GG Well Played are going to undo this one because they have sent that 5100 around the back, T32 as well, but 5100's waiting T37, as you mentioned, on the hill. There's a lot still in play here for WSD Gaming that we haven't actually seen put into practice. So 30 seconds left on the board. It's going to have to be a pretty decent effort going from GG Well Played if they want this one done. Mary does hit a good little shot towards a Gorni. Uh, now They've gone out. Looks like they might be looking for the fold here. The 5100s push down the D-line. We're going to have Agorni and Hacky starting to look for something here. They know Mary's going to be waiting for a shell available for a couple more seconds. And the play is coming through this time. It looks like WSD Gaming were looking for that moment to play, to push, to find it. And Hacky gets tracked in the worst place, gets one extra than he wanted. And Phoenix will find honor, but surely the reply kill will come in place. Meritorious now being swarmed by four. Run in the background, can't do much as Agorni just pushes straight out. I don't know what Agorni is thinking. He has no shells available here, but neither does Ron. Our FC Dynamo, Agorni will have it first, finds one. Tries to back out, but careless move maybe. 
Yeah, but he's got support now, and they'll be able to surge around, take down Ron, no problem at all. FC Dynamo will probably find Killer Pit. As Killer Pit does a good job here, and to be honest, Nervax, Haki, all down, and fantastic little individual play by Killer Pit, but the Dead Zone will be off reload pretty soon, and they might just be able to finish this game off, but they have to kill, keep Killer Pit alive. Can they do it? Dynamo found the Dead Zone. At 5100 in the south still. Playing for time. 35 seconds overall. 47 on the cap. Griffin comes in, finds Killer Pit. Nervax now in trouble. This is good work from Griffin coming in, ignoring what's in the back and takes down Nervax as the kills or can't do much now. And it looks like GG well played. I've held on well enough. Yeah, the dead zone and Nervax maybe have thrown this game a little bit. They tried to go for a concerted move onto Montiablo, but support from Griffin changed the outcome of this game as the kills are. It's going to struggle to penetrate the front of this T32 uh, IS3, but as long as he hits that frontal glacius, it shouldn't be a too big of a problem. He will have reload before SC Dino, but time has run out and uh, kind of robbed off that kill. Yeah, but still, it. <laughs> what do we make of that play? Because it was quite close for a while, um, and you said it was quite reminiscent of something you saw from Hellraisers. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm not sure if it's a WGLRU tactic, but it's what I've seen from the WGLA yep. first. So obviously these guys have been training since last Monday or last time we saw Himmelsdorf. Things change. Um, but yeah, I think the mistake then was that Montiablo and that T32 was hauled down. Mm -hmm. Nervax and Dead Zone pushed over in those 51 to try and take him out. Yes, they had the kills on the hill in T37, but Phoenix and or Griffin were in, was in the background and they managed to basically kill um Nervax and put Dead Zone at a one shot. Also, Gorney pushing around was a little bit of a mistake, and that's the thing. GG World Play could just reverse and make shots, and you know every single player of uh, WST Gaming were one shots, and WST Gaming were a little bit too aggressive. I think what they should have done is probably get Dead Zone off the reload, kill FC Dynamo, but still they would have had to deal with Griffin, who had like 80% HP. So it was just good. Good surrounding play by GG World Play just to keep WST Gaming at fairly low amount of HP. Well, early advantage now going forward. Uh, what? Do, I, I don't know if it was decisive enough to say one team's stronger than the other so far. It seems still quite close between these two. Yeah. Um, anything that can split them apart here? Well, I, I was impressed by WST Gaming. I thought they lacked a little bit of execution, but I think that was that was good play. Um, they showed class and they showed style and um, some great shots as well. Just a couple of individual errors definitely mm. didn't help. And FC Dynamo doing almost 3k damage in that IS3 certainly didn't didn't do much. And that's the thing, you know, GG, play, GG well played, fantastic shooting. Even if they had a pixel and a shot that was um, going across a tank that could take two shots, they still had to hit that tank behind it, which was a one shot. And that's what you want from your players, to be able to hit those shells against tanks that are being blocked by your team so by the enemy team so great great play by gg well played there great individual skill and clearly mm. that chinese tournament seems to have matured them a little bit elong um kind of embarrassed them i have to say i mean the asia slash korea region has not been known to be particularly strong and uh mm -hmm. looking as we've been talking about the grand finals looking towards that great stuff from them and i can't wait to see what they what they're capable of Exactly, because in every other eSport, pretty much excluding probably CSGO at the moment, Korea and China will always be towards the top. Yeah. At 1.6, probably had some very good teams in Korea and China. I think like uh, Tyloo Raw. Well, the thing is, eSports has always been about StarCraft. And yeah, it's, it's like Brood War it's kind of hard because yeah. I don't think any other game is a mature enough eSports for us to say any region is particularly strong in it. League. China. I think generally, I think <laughs> that might, Korea, I think that might just it. be going towards MOBA in general, maybe because as a, as a maybe. genre, it's mature enough for the esports scene to develop. Mm. Yeah. Not n not necessarily because of that particular game. Mm. Of course, I'll be interested to see if World of Tanks does you know, really crack it over yeah, there. I, I, I want to see what they can bring right. because the thing is, uh, in Asia, it's not that big, yeah. but in China, it's m like massive, like the third biggest, massive out there. biggest it's game. Crazy! Played. It's like yeah. compared to everyone else in the world, it's like these figures just look obscene. But they do have a lot of people yeah. in that country. So that aside, back into the EU World of Tanks. Even if GG well played, you know, dance the line sometimes. We will be seeing once again in the south in red, WSD Gaming. In the north in blue, GG well played, locking down on defense. And 1-0 already. Can GG well 
There we go. Two zero already. One zero. Yeah, it's one zero. Okay, I'm going mad. All right. Yeah, no, it's one two. No, it's one zero. Counting is hard. There we go. Nailed it. All righty. Into this we go. And one zero. GG well played. Kicking off this one, do we like Dynasty Gaming's lineup? Did anything really change? Uh, not much change. You've got the double IS instead of, well, I guess a lot changed if you think about it. You got the double IS instead of the extra tier eight, and uh, no T37 played de by De Kilzor. De Kilzor is not even in this battle. He's actually been replaced 100% by um, Haki, which is interesting. So, mm. oh, De Kilzor is. I mean, is he? De Kilzor is in the battle. He's a shot he's, caller. He's he always screen. has to be in the battle. Mm. But it's uh, yeah. So <laughs> the two ices, the two ices threw me off. So the two ices there. Interesting play now. You got Honor Griffin and Honor Duck Kills and the dead zone in those 5100s, basically holding the cross to shoot the line through those two houses. And then you got Killer Pit, Nervax, Haki, um, and Agorni to see a GG well played to push in the other side. So very interesting move from WCT Gaming. Kind of thinking about things before they do it and it's, it's great to see and they are they're going to push around they're not wasting any time first shell's going to come out of merry and that's the thing the is 3 is not the best tank for this position it's certainly not can he find anything here we discussed this before we didn't like it in the previous games but now good fire comes in phoenix takes a pounding you can hear the shells rattling through as the dead zone to kill Zor and on the 5100s make it into the battle mon diablo goes down and now the 3-4 split is coming to action. It looks like Dynasty Gaming are getting the kills, but the damage is so close between these two. They could swing either way. If only Mary was in that 5100 or something a little bit more, he could do some real wonders. But still, he does find a Gorni, but now here comes the dead zone and the kills. Off. Yeah, that's for 5100s, though. They take so long to get into that position. It does allow Mary just to push around. And because the a GG well played have dealt with, dealt with those tanks up the three line, they can just turn their turrets towards them. Novak's doing the best he can, but there's not much he can do. And again, WSD Gaming losing out on those firefights. And it uh, looks like another game going towards GG well played, but they are still hanging on. Trying to, with all of their worth. HP still very close until WSD Gaming just took a bit of a beating again. It's he swings around about Ron though, delivering a beautiful shell to Daki and now Mary gonna just wait for it. Delivers it the international. He's gonna maintain his shell and just place it towards the dead zone. International comes around waiting a couple more seconds and Phoenix comes in. This looks like GG well played, asserting their dominance here. Beautifully done, boys. Holding it well. Question some of their positional choices, but GG well played. Pick up battle number two. Yeah, um, GG well played is exactly how I described that. Not much to say about it. Um, clearly, what happened then was the uh, engagement was good from WS to game. I thought it was quite clever that they sent the 5100s mm -hmm. down later. Montiablo fell, and that was definitely advantage to WSD Gaming, but um, because the kills in the dead zone, they take so long to drive up north, Meritorious could just drive around the corner and get into a different position, and as soon as uh, those two would head around, he would uh, they would die. So, you know... Whilst those two tanks or three tanks were, you know, rotating, changing positions, GG well played could clean up. I think those two or three tanks, those three 5100s, should have just stayed put and just peaked. Use Montiablo's wreck and just help the IS3s and dealt with uh, Meritorious if they had to. So overall, though, from what we've seen, we've had two battles now rather than just, you know, a glimpse into one. Will we say GG well played is just stronger overall now, or how are we how are we defining this between these two? It's hard to say. I think they are. Um, I, I like the kind of strategy from WSD Gaming. I like yep. the way they're playing, but um, GG well played look on point in terms of their player skill and their ability, and uh, I think they are making the right decisions. But they haven't really been tested. I think they'll be tested on the attacking round. Um, but you can see this. The, the the heavy firepower tanks go around. I think WSD Gaming loses his initial engagement, as you would expect, because uh, GG well plays all um, static. But now the 5100s come into play, and they take down Montiablo, and that's where things do start to change. See, they should have just stayed here, but the thing is, the kills of the dead don't go forward to try and deal with Mary. But yeah. these three should have just stayed there, and just absolutely annihilated FC Dynamo, Phoenix, and International. There's no reason why they should do that going forwards. Certainly... Errors made, issues to be had. But GG well played. We'll be staying firmly in the lead so far. But do we think it would stay true to this going forward? Do you think it will even back up? Or do you think it might edge ahead now? Um, depends on how 
much WC Gaming has taken those two losses by heart. I don't think they have, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, that was clearly an all-in move where it would either win or it would lose. I mean, yeah. it's not like they were playing for the late game. They pretty much got into a certain part of the map straight away and then pushed in. So I think this could go to all. Um, it wouldn't be a surprise as what happened in the previous game. Um, of course, GG well played might have some tricks up their sleeve and uh, that could surprise uh, uh, WC Gaming. Well couple more seconds to go and we'll be live into the game. Get those final thoughts through to us because we are going to get this one started and we'll be seeing the side switch and change between WSD Gaming and GG World Played. Let's take a look in game, see how this one pans out as we will be seeing in the south in blue GG World Played on the attack. In the north in red, WSD Gaming. And I assure you, this is no replay. So, going into this one, any lineup changes in mind? Well, they are switching sides, so of course there's going to be lineup changes. Um, we've got the Killzor and the Waffentrager. Interesting. Um, Hacky in the KV3, um, more normal. And, uh, well, GG will play on the attacking side, going for that Waffentrager again. And um, it's not unusual. He's actually picked up the 12.8, so 750 average damage. Good little, little gun there. Good penetration as well. So see if he can actually do some real work like other players have done with this tank. But apart from that, T37 coming more of a mainstay on this map, a little bit more dynamic. Um, and uh, see if Ron does a better job than uh, the kills I did last time. Well, that's uh, something to keep your eyes on. As Ron will be heading up. P37. Somewhat becoming a mainstay in this map, at least. And here comes a bit of a play up the A line. We've been saying, give an option, blind shots come out. Nothing to be found there. Still, 5 minutes and 28 seconds, dead zone. Just being called out a little early. Not sure if he really fancied that one. A little bit, uh, a little bit careless almost at this point. And this is a different style from GG well played. Switching up a little bit here on the attack. Looking quite unique so far. We saw something a little reminiscent almost of school bus so far. Yeah, dead zone got spotted by that T37, I believe, or Griffin on the hill. And of course, Griffin, as you all know, perfect prime position to shoot anything from A3 to A5 and basically down um, and now Griffin heading off the hill so it looks like right now GGL plays it's a bit chaotic they're setting up for something quite normal Griffin a little bit careless as he heads across but he's done the training he knows that he won't get spotted in that position especially if WSD Gaming has no spotting points Copula for instance Copula, Copula as people say and around that corner. So Novax in that T29. It does look like W S T game is a little bit rattled, but the setup from GG well played just seems a little bit careless. And it's international heading forwards in the A line, and he's going to go forwards into the cap undoubtedly. Looks like most of GG well played in towards the middle. T29 of Novax does spot Mary Torius. Not a hell lot of information because Mary Torius was spotted before, and he's really not moving. It's what the rest of WG, um, GG well played are doing <laughs> that interests me. WGLEU, WSD Gaming, and GG Well Play. There's a lot That's of unbelievable. acronyms. It is acronyms, right? Yes, it is acronyms. It's it's horrific. We, I'm just going to start calling things their full name. If I knew what <laughs> the full names were, I would say Good it. game, well played. There we go. Dot, Dot pro. pro. <laughs> and then WSD Gaming? There is no long version. I think WSD Gaming literally just means WSD. WSD. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> anyway, International 64 does take a shell. Um, for peeking out, but he's got the IS3, so at least he can find some form of positioning there, and he should be fine. Maybe allow the attention to be drawn to him, while the rest of GG well played will start getting themselves into that cap circle. Mary does take a shell on the way through, takes a big hit there, 767 done, but he might just make it to cover and find some respite. Uh, the thing is, that was great. International basically peaked a little bit, caused basically the whole of WST Gaming to send the volley his way as a Gornian honor, I believe. And then they pushed across and basically mitigated about six to 800 damage. So nice little trick up uh, GG World Play Sleeve. You guys can use that in team battles if you do wish. But WST Gaming heading around the flank. You've got the Waffentrager, the Borsig with actually the 15 centimeter, not the 12.8, as I was saying. And Dick Kilzor will be feeling it right about now. Thumbs up, brother. Takes a thumb to the side of 797 damage. God, will you stop? It's gotten worse. 
<laughs> Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing with my life, Lauren. I don't know. <laughs> We're all in this together. Anyway, six minutes on the cap. It's all down to Dynasty Gaming to stop this. Finally, the shell's coming from Igorni. He'd had to commit a little there, but the international going quite low in the cap. Timer slowing down the split from Griffin and Phoenix. Might have to come into practice a little earlier than wanted. And they will be pushing out of the cap. So looking maybe to close this out in another way as Dynasty Gaming are maintaining numbers. And you can see the dead zone in the middle actually pushing in. He's being aggressive right now, being caught out a little bit because Griffin could just simply turn around. He will get the last shell off before Griffin does finally make that move. And the dead zone should have probably been a little bit more clever. But the thing is, it has allowed WST Gaming to go forwards and get themselves into slightly better position. And oh, Phoenix, what the hell was that? The kills or just got blown away. Absolutely beautiful, but Honor maybe waiting for a chance around the backside there. But Hashtag no aim. <laughs> 38 seconds, 4 v 4 on the cap. Novak Sanagorni have to press it, but Phoenix comes in, finds Honor. Three left now for WSD Gaming there, struggling on numbers. GG well played, maintain the upper hand on HP as well. International is a one shot. Killer Pit looking for the ram, looking for anything. He's not going to get it. He does in the end. It was Hacky, I believe, to come in on that one. And now two stand, but they're doing some damage here. And now 2v2 on the cap, but the backup has arrived. Griffin comes in, and now Hacky up against four. And he's playing KV3. This is game over. WSD Gaming. Unfortunately, losing this game and GG well played looking on point. Nice little roll there. 462 damage, 488. Of course, the maximum. Phoenix, again, no aim, but he doesn't really need to for some reason. 1.7k damage and hits uh, kills that KV3. So good play from GG well played. Yeah, GG well played now, though. 3 to 0, looking quite strong. And in that game, I, they didn't look all that pushed, they didn't look all that threatened. Even when they were quite close, whether it be in numbers, damage, Whatever it was, they were always just seeming quite calm and collected. Yeah, um, they were. And I think what was won and lost is that the dead zone pushed into the middle. Yeah. Griffin just pushed around and he just took care of him. The kills have got himself into position, though, because of that. And I think, mm. I'm sure he was behind him. But he expected to get the shot into Griffin. But Griffin was just like, yo, just to um, turned his tire a little bit and took him out very quickly. <laughs> the kills should have won that one versus one, but he didn't. And uh, it allowed Griffin to take down... Uh, take um, go into the middle and basically close this game out. So I think it was one and lost in that middle area, as it often is, because, you know, when you do want to decap, you have to flank around. And it's on that flank that you kind of do determine if you can deep decap correctly. And if you don't manage to do that correctly, then you have to push up that A, A B line. And you can see that can go quite badly for you because you do have to turn that corner. So, yeah, at least uh, GG will play picking up around on the attacking side. Nothing spectacular, but all around good play. Yeah, and looking at it this way, though, it's a 3-0 scoreline. So if they get a 4-0 on the first map, who picked this, do you know? Or who eliminated to get this one? Is there... um, GG well play picked up Himmelsdorf. Okay, well, at least... So they're winning on their map. That makes sense. What's the next one again? Steps? Steps. Uh, GG well played on the attacking side. See, I, I still feel this could be over very quickly if um, WSD Gaming don't pick up this round, obviously. Um, <laughs> but still, I think that they're... Struggling a little bit here. They they seem to be trailing behind constantly. Um, considering WSD Gaming's in second place, mm. GG well played should be the ones struggling a little bit. But I, as you said, I think that trip, maybe out there playing you know, in the offline environment, just boosted them up a little. Maybe made them focus up a touch here. The thing is, you got to remember what GG well played is that they're not a new team. Actually, um, we talk about them yeah. like they're a new team, but they just simply aren't. Uh, they've Denova, been here as they, right? yeah, exactly. Denova. Um, Are they MYM? No. Yeah, they were. They were. They were. They yeah. were. They've been around for Asia. They were Red Tide. <laughs> they were Russian Pirates. They were MYM. They were Denova Gaming. They were GG Well Played. So these guys have been around. I mean, they're gonna have. I mean, uh, Yuri's had a go at me this before because I said that they're Russian Pirates, but it's not really the same lineup. But whatever. It's the same, the same team. Like it's yeah. the same bloodline if you think about it. I mean, I'm not my grandfather, but I'm still a Maxfield. Still yeah. my family. You know, yeah. it's come from the same place. So. It's the same kind of thing, and they've been around for a long time. Season three, and they were quite well. Season two as well. The thing is, they skipped out season four because they tried to qualify for WGLNA, but they got disqualified from that. So they basically skipped the whole season, went into the Silver Series, fought through the Silver Series, got through that, and then got themselves into this final. So they're not new. A little bit out of practice, and that's why they had a few shaky results in the first um, kind of half of the season. Probably why they're not in second, and that's why they're probably yeah. chasing WSD Gaming. But nevertheless, w one of the most experienced teams in terms of players, and definitely, you know, a tight-knit group of players. Well, let's bear in mind they were consistently a top-three team 
back when they were in this on, in the online exactly. phases, they were always so strong. Anyway, I believe it's time to get into game now. The teams are ready. Let's turn our attention to what's going down in Himmelsdorf. So, GGL played in the south in blue. Three rounds beside them now. WSD Gaming need to find something here. Any changes of lineup that stand out to you, or is this fairly similar to what we started out with? Um, no, same kind of thing from GGL played. The only thing they switch around that um, uh, Waffentager to an extra IS-3. And Ron's playing the T37, so they've gone for uh, the six tier eights, the one tier six, and uh, WS2 Gaming, though, sticking to what they know with T29 and KV3, the two tier sevens. Um, and looks like they are changing things up in terms of tactics. Instead of sticking st up in that normal position, they've basically <laughs> created a wall of death via Killer Pit, the dead zone, and Agorni. So that's three. Well, 150-100, two IS-3s. In my opinion, the most deadly combination because you get the, the Alpha, an immediate 800 damage, and then you get the the uh, Amix 5100's burst just to finish off any tank that happens to wander past. Um, and also, they won't get spotted until it's too late. 50-meter proxy rule, it's just too late, and uh, I think those three can actually decap. Now, you've got the 5100s, all of them, towards the left side, apart from one, and the KV-3 just up north. So it's... A very interesting tactic from WSD game. You can kind of see the logic. They want to surprise GG well played from every angle, but also be in a position where they can actually defend. So, it's laying in wait pretty much for WSD Gaming here. I think GG well played a... Maybe going to start wondering where they are, because normally you might have caught a spot here and there by then. Well, that's why WC games should just peek and make sure that they're spotted. Like, so peek the t T29. Yeah, oh, just, look, just the T29's like being in a normal position. Yeah. Oh, let's just push up there. So. Let's see if these guys can do anything here. And Killer Pit, dead zone. Agorni waiting. The cap has started. Did they even think? about the western cap new <laughs> and look they're all ready and waiting around and the now corner. they peek around the corner oh my god it's almost GG like they knew played. how the hell did they find that well i guess you could imagine why they didn't spot anyone why is there no one here why did we peek these angles and no one challenge but mary already finds a gorni in the dead zone now takes one quickly and this is just going atrociously wrong for wc gaming uh, griffin now next target the kills are trying to get on the flank a little bit and as you said, uh, the HP firmly in favor of GG World Play, but WSD Gaming are doing a little bit of a good job getting back into this game. Monteablo doesn't quite get connected by the dead zone, but the dead zone's kind of uh, keeping his ground as the kills or does get permanently tracked by Phoenix, and he might fall. Yeah, he certainly does. Phoenix comes in, does get the kill, but look how low WSD Gaming's HP is there. Half of what GG World Played are. And now FC Dynamo finds Hacky. He's making it look oh so easy here. And let's see if anyone else can do the same. Nervax, not feeling good about this one. And the one-dimensional defensive play, surprisingly, went very wrong. No, exactly. I'm, I'm still trying to work out exactly how GG World played new WSD Gaming were there. Yeah. I don't know, because, I mean, yes, they don't spot, but it's still theoretically possible that you don't spot someone. Yeah, because there's always a chance because they're somewhere GG else. Because GG World played didn't have anyone on the hill, so they shouldn't be able to spot A4. I don't know. A. All the, yeah. all the T37 maybe didn't spot in, in a location they knew, but GG World Play were basically started the cap and then ready and waiting when WSD Gaming pushed around. It was smart. I don't know how they knew it, but they did, and it worked. Uh, simple as that. 4-0 now. Himmelsdorf pretty much being spanked and has a massive GG World Play you know, uh, flag. Banner. Just, just waving somewhere on it. I, I don't, I do not understand the game sense in that last round, but they, they knew. There's an they, obvious they reason. Up, yeah. They set up something. They must have maybe watched um, those D gaming. Bear in mind, they may have had training battles. They have discussed things before. You know, you don't know how these teams kind of work things out. How they, you know, practice. Did Dodgy Gaming play against a sister team of GG World Played? They noticed, you know, how they play when they do this. Actually, it means they're, you know, playing very passive, sitting and waiting. You never know. Obviously, there's a reason these training battles take place, and it's a lot of theory crafting to it as well. So all of that kind of plays through into this one. But all in all, 4-0, it's a tough one to come back from. Yeah, it's game over now, I think. Yeah, even if, well, as I said, 4-0, we've only seen one time against TCM Gaming and Virtus Pro where 
teams come back from a 4-0 deficit, basically, mm. or 3-1 deficit. So it would be unheard of. I mean, WS Gaming are really good, but as you said before, GG World plays game sense is just on point right now. Yeah, it's unbelievably uh, impressive. But Melly, the people at home, how are they taking this one? Did they vote from the staff at GG World played, or did they maybe keep those votes 50-50? Uh, absolutely 50 50. It's, it mm. seems like the community can't decide. Um, at this moment, it's 51% for GG Well Played. The last time I refreshed the vote, it was 52% for uh, WAST Gaming. So it seems that you guys don't really know um, whom to whom to wo vote for, or or maybe both teams have the same amount of community out mm. there. I don't know. So uh, you will still have time until the second map starts. You can get in your votes on facebook.com slash WGLEU. Just click on the little team vote button. Then you will get forward to an app where you can vote for your teams. And while well, you know the drill and people, you still have time. Use those five minutes because it seems like people can't really decide. If I look um, at the votes, I, well, I can't see a 5-0 prediction right now. I think it will change after the next map, to be honest. And as said, you still have time. Maybe you'll be the first one to vote 5-0 and maybe get it right um, at the end. Nobody knows. Maybe <laughs> WASD Gaming will come back. We, we've seen the castle's curse before. So all he said, um, it's game over. So we'll be sitting here until the cider map, I guess. Yes. Anyhow, break, get something to drink. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready to go. Okay, no break. So how about getting it for, yeah. exactly uh, into the second map? Yeah, Much no fun. breaks today. I so think, the uh, vote is over as soon as the game starts. So people get voting, I guess. There you go. Melly's told you. Get doing it right now. Get on Facebook. Get those votes going and get involved with us here in the studio. We love to hear from you. And of course, these teams are just chomping at the bit. GG World played want to get the game started, of course, because, you know, they've got the momentum building. They're on 4 0. They don't want to mess around now. And WSD Gaming, they just want to push them off that. They want to catch them, maybe feeling overconfident, maybe making errors, maybe going for a quick rush. But we are just waiting on one player, I believe, right now. Uh, yeah, we are going to see Grom go up and okay. uh, Hacky go down. So there's a little switcheroo. Grom, clearly the artillery player of choice now for WSD Gaming, playing that M44. Mm -hmm. Interesting choice. And I just want to go back to Himmelsdorf for one second because if you must, um, I do remember that GG were played sent three fifty one hundreds up onto the hill and they went right to the edge of the hill, and they should have spotted something down in the A one to A five area. Like they spotted, um, I'm not sure exactly what it was. I think it was the De Kilzor or someone like that in the AMX fifty one hundred because um, if you can you can have like binocular telescopes or coded optics. I don't think you need that to spot them. So I think they just guessed correctly, and I didn't actually see them go on the hill. That was my bad. So. But to be fair to them as well, they did just force um, WC Gaming to rotate, and there's only one place they're going to come from. They checked the hill. Yeah. They'd already got the tank capping out in the western cap, um, and there was only one route they could really take together, and they put tanks mm. in both. So. <clears throat> you know, it's it's not saying it's dodgy. It's just saying that basically they played smart and they yeah, uh, manipulated the game to what they wanted the opponent to do. It's just good play. Yeah, um, I think Hillsdorf allows for it because there's a lot of corridors, a lot of choke points, a lot of yeah. uh, pushing and pulling the open maps. Maybe not so much to the same degree. Mm. However, uh, your opinion on this one between these two? So we got two AMX 3991s, T4959, 60. My opinion is that WSD Gaming has got a very long, hard, hard slog ahead of them. Um, it's going to be hard for them. GG World Play, not the greatest um, uh, track record, but they did win against Wooster twice in a row last time they played this map. WSD Gaming, this is obviously their map of choice. Himmelsdorf certainly wasn't. Mm -hmm. Two wins, two losses on this map against Wooster as well. So both these guys have played Wooster on this map last. It's a little bit of a mm. coincidence, but that's the <laughs> way round robin works. Now, GG will play on the attack and um, WSD Gaming on the defense. Of course, the M44 in play, at least from WSD Gaming. Grom, probably the first time we've seen him this season. I was always yeah. wondering who's going to be the best artillery player for WSD Gaming. Clearly, the kills always got some experience in there. Um, another one of my... Um, one of my uh, Padawans, and, well, he can't really play that, maybe because he wants to be more of a frontline tank and the yeah. one who shot calls in the firefights. But look at this play coming out from WST Gaming. They're finally looking a little aggressive. They are starting the north in the red this time, and g Duel played R in the blue in the south on the attack, and very aggressive play from WST Gaming. Yeah, I just want to stop g Duel played to go forwards, but g Duel played 
uh, they were heading across the middle left side of the map and then they immediately just turned around and now heading towards the right side uh, predicting that WSD Gaming are going to go for that because they didn't spot anything on the cross and um, the two two five ones were aggressive towards the right side didn't spot anything really from WSD Gaming and uh, well the only other option is that they are up north so again you know GG were played great game sense great knowledge and very quick to react certainly are and uh, this is one of the biggest points to um, GG well played back in the days they were so quick at responding so smart within these plays I absolutely love watching it now let's see where they take it so they went right and they're going back left and they might actually be able to get in position right about now as well, WC Gaming have actually pushed back across this time, so they should have a shot at this. Mon Diablo, Ron, going to make it there. However, I think that maybe WC Game is catching on to it. Mon Diablo and Ron were spotted, so it's going to be a close one now with everyone kind of meeting back up on this western side. Yeah, they go back to the original positioning. Um, I would say. It's very hard for GG World Play to go forwards, actually. As long as WSD Gaming get it kind of settled, they're going to be in the higher ground and in the better positions. But first shells do come out, um, and oof, this is going to be hard. They have only got pixel shots against uh, Montiablo and Honor, but they do find the first couple, as it looks like Honor's got a great angle on to Mary, actually. Mary's been caught out here. No one can really save him. Oh, but Mary's not going down without a fight. He's got Honor on fire, but still, Killer Pit puts him down and we're seeing the 1390 split towards the east gonna try and come around the backside and Grom laying down the fire but not getting much luck but Phoenix will find Igorni and keep GG well played in this game and looking at the HP it's not looking too great for GG well played just at the moment they might need to find a little bit of an edge in this one they're still struggling for this Ron's being bullied as the dead zone and Killer Pit come around you can clearly see WST Gaming are in a little bit of a class of their own on this map they're surrounding GG well played they're using their light tank skills um, Killer Pit might fall he does actually a great little flick shot there for an international but I think dead zone will quite happily finish oh. off the international that Pershing clearly a, a bad reload but you will find it a nice little bit of damage at the end. And Montiablo easily found by Honor. Yeah, now just FC Dynamo left alive. The dead zone, Honor, and Grom still against him. And don't get me wrong, he could easily take down Grom. But these two might be a bit of a troublesome sight. But FC Dynamo receives the shell there. And it is 1v2, but he's, he's doing the best he can in this one. And the shell gets it, chooses Honor. If he can avoid the shell from the dead zone, he has a chance here! And oh my word! He's done the 1v2! Grom now! 1v1 up against FC Dynamo! That was absolutely stunning! Perfect play from FC Dynamo. FC Dynamo has to try and stay alive here. Grom has got to also do the same thing. It's. I don't know if he's got a good idea where Grom is either, because no. Grom's not really sure. But he's got much so himself. much time to play with, and in the 2 5 1, it's just. So this is the thing, you know, 240 average damage and the dead zone did 206. That's like the lowest roll is 188. So <laughs> it's pretty close to the lowest roll there. 240, 206. SD Dynamo. RNGesus. Grom. <laughs> what a debut. Has to now save his team, pretty much. Up against the man who single-handedly absolutely destroyed them. <laughs> now, Grom has two options. He can either run away or he can hold his ground. And FC Dynamo just has to check the normal positions. FC Dynamo needs to be careful as well where he's driving. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be very careful. Three three HP, a little nudge could, could also uh, cost him his life for sure. But FC Dynamo is doing the right, right thing. He's heading in the right direction. Um, and he's also going to probably have loaded He has been spotted, H though. Yeah, he's been spotted. Now, the question is, yes, he makes a shot on the side, but he's not going to be able to make that shell unless he goes across. Well, here we go, Grump. This is your chance. Save your team. Oh, GG well played. Be picking this one up. Three kills for FC Dynamo. Looking for his oh! What the exchange? What the hell? Who got it? They both got it. It's game over. It's a draw.
What's going on here? It's actually a draw in 7.54. That rhymes, but... <laughs> what? What? Bullet travel mo- time, literally. The most ridiculous oh game I've God. ever seen. I think well, we might have to take a moment here. Uh, yeah, so what's the rules on that? <laughs> I want to see the chat one second. <laughs> well, Lull. What are the what are the rules on a draw? Because the 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 chance of that happening is so slim. I don't think. Do we have rules for this? The chance of this happening is ridiculously low because if you cap and you okay, let's say a team gets 100 percent an explanation on the cap, but if you kill the guy, the last guy on the other team, you the person who gets the kill wins. Like World Tanks, it's got like hierarchy. Kill is like the 100 percent the way to win. Mm. Then it comes capping. So if you kill and then you cap, then you win. But they both killed each other at the same time. This is not in the rulebook, guys. Honestly, this is not in the rulebook. Because we never expected this to ever happen. Of course it does happen. And now we all look like idiots. But it's going to be have to be a replay, I imagine. I want this in like slow-mo. I don't want everything. But I don't think we'll get that. But still, just look at the travel time on this as well. So It's not even that different. The travel so who's time, alive last? It, it's not even that there much of a difference between the travel time. Like... He's SC Dynamo is using HE because he has to one shot here. here we go. Grom is also using HE. Look at the timing of this. Grom actually moving forward for it. That's we're never gonna find out. We. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <gasps> Ladies and gents, we we need we need a moment to clarify. <clears throat> um, Melly, if people at home have their opinions on this, <laughs> and you're stunned as we are, I know, but. Uh, if they, if they want to, you know, give us some thoughts on how they feel this should be ruled, where can they go? Facebook, Twitter? <laughs> just fill for a second where we find out from the admins what I, to I'm do. I'm just I'm just questioning everything right now. So well, people. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, messages. What do you think? What, what should we do? <laughs> I think the admins will find a solution any second. Just use the hashtag WGLEU and tell us your thought. Would you have ever imagined that something like this could have happened? Well, we clearly didn't. <laughs> so, uh, yes, that's why we need a little time. Let's see what... I'd love to have this situation in real time. I, I can't wait for all the reactions on, on Twitter and the Twitch chat. I'll be sitting here... In, in five minutes, glued to my computer and uh, actually just reading Twitch chat. Yeah. It will be mental. Quick, uh, quick. Okay. Yes, sure, go ahead. Quick, go ahead. Okay, Nothing. quick, go, go, quick go. update. There is actually a rule for this. We do have a rule. We're not idiots. So my well. bad for knowing. Um, but yeah, um, our kind admins, our awesome admin team. Yeah. Shout out to admin team. You guys go and get to see them. They go, yeah. do a great job in the background. So 7.1.1.1 in the rule book. That's how long our rule book is. Um, and it's not even near the bottom. Um, so I'll read this out to you straight away. A match is a draw if only if and only if the result screen that is displayed after the end of a battle displays draw. In case of a draw, the game is scored at 0 to 0 and the match proceeds to the next map as normal. Next map as normal. So we're ignoring all of that and just replaying it. Exactly. It's basically what it says. I'm getting flashbacks. <laughs> yes, people, tell us your opinion. Use the hashtag WGLEU over at Twitter and also on Facebook. Spam our timelines. Would you have ever expected something like this happen? Well, I'm really looking forward to your tweets. Are we directly continuing uh, the yeah, game or yeah, are yeah. we heading to a break? Yeah, we're, no, we're not. We're going to go and continue. There's no okay. reason to go to a break. The team's already. They've been explaining the situation. We should be on the way. Amazing. Then Alrighty. have fun. Let's get back to the game then, ladies and gents. The team's R&D games was ready joining said server. And I hope we don't ever get a draw again. That confused my brain. Imagine that happen in the grand finals in the final. Don't do that. The hype would be unreal. Don't but do that. <laughs> do you know what's going to happen now? Yeah, I know. No, no, Knowing your luck. Anyway. So in before. Uh, <clears throat> I can see the stream almost catching up now. Oh, God. <laughs> there's, a sm- there's obviously a delay between this Five and the game. Um, so the teams and anyone else can't you know, watch the stream or Stream's listen to like. it. Yeah, it basically makes it fair for everyone. Um, however, I do believe the teams are in the game and ready to go. So let's actually start looking towards that one and getting this one started up again. And hopefully, no more draws. Alrighty, into this. Uh, what are we seeing? And technically, WS the game should have probably won that last map. But SD Dino went absolutely huge. He's been so goddamn good this match day. It's almost upsetting that I'm that bad at this game. 
But uh, <laughs> it's going to be a different game this time around. We'll have to see how this one works out. Again, W's to gaming towards the left side. And same as uh, F uh, GG well played and FC Dynamo might even carry again. This could be a repeat of the last round if it goes like it does at the moment. Let's hope it's not a repeat. At least for my sake, as we will be seeing now. Damage coming in and actually... This time, Drusty gave me a little bit later towards that eastern side, maybe taking the time, not expecting such a quick play from GG well played. And we are going to see a little bit of a brawl kick off now. Yeah, a couple of shots going back and forth and International being found with a couple more than he should have received. But uh, looks like WST, uh, GG well played are even better prepared, though. They are going to do a lot of damage and maybe even take down Killer Pit as he does head around that corner. FC Dynamo does find him, but response onto Phoenix. Certainly does. And now one for two trade. Phoenix down to Killzor and Killer Pit for WSD Gaming down. And look at the focus towards Nervax. Nervax gets caught out, backing away, but merely to a corner. Ron's going to put him to bed. And it looks like GG well played. Come out swinging this time. They're not happy with the idea of a draw. They want the win and they want it now. A Gorni around the back, but maybe a little late to the party. That M44 doing nothing in these circumstances. The dead zone being circled by the buzzards. He's going to come in. Do the job. That's Mary doing that. Surely going to hold him up here as International lays down the consistent fire towards Agorni, but the dead zone still giving this one all he's got. But now it's just down to one man again. Grom, you did. You pulled off a miracle last time. I don't think you're going to get it this time. No, I think uh, WST Gaming knew this game was over. They seemed to be a little bit lackluster, didn't really concentrate. And it will be a 5 0 to GG Well Played. Clearly, I think on that second map, WSD Gaming would have had a chance, but 4-0 scoreline was a little bit too much for them to actually come back from. So I think Himmelsdorf was probably a bag pick against GG yeah. World Played, who have been known in the past to be the Himmelsdorf Kings. Even back in prior seasons, exactly. they were able to challenge like the Virtus Pro, you know, everyone on that map <laughs> yeah. to, a, to a very comfortable extent. I'm exactly. surprised that no one kind of remembers that factor. No. And it still gets played, and they still pick up almost 4-0 wins every single time. However... Um, that means the world for GG well played. That's a very clean win coming in for them. That will put them basically secured now. I'd say there's there's a chance if everything goes against them, let's say results-wise, that they mm. could drop below. But essentially, they are as safe as they can be yeah. at this point. I think they can be pretty rest assured that they'll be safe. It's so unlikely that they don't qualify at this point in time. Um, yeah. But yeah, big, big match day. We found out that TCM Gaming can stay in the runnings. Of course, GG World Played, we just witnessed, will bring themselves up to 19 points, so second. WC Gaming don't have to be too worried. I think they can probably still stay in the runnings right now. I think they can be quite happy with that result. And of course, School Bus Utopia. School Bus just about besting Utopia. And by School Bus taking the two points, Utopia picking the one point, they both kind of stay in the same position. Yeah, so all in all, I think it's been a pretty darn good play day. I think we had some good games, some very long games as well. So thank you, everyone who stayed with us this long. So uh, once again, thank you very much. And hopefully we kept you guys uh, amused with the draw coming into play. I, I see the Twitch <laughs> chat kind of exploding, going, there's no such thing as a draw. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, yes, there is. There is a thing as a draw. What is this? So yeah, thank you guys for sticking with us so long. But that's enough from me, at least. Melly, any closing words? Well, we saw everything <laughs> today, right? We saw a clean win, we saw a draw when there should be no draws happening. And we saw the cider map and it was a great day overall. Thank you for staying with us. Just to sum it up, Schoolbus versus Utopia and at 5-4, Drooling Leprechauns versus TCM and at 3-5 in TCM's favor. And of course, the 5-0 victory for GG Well Played versus WASD Gaming. Congratulations to all winning teams. Don't forget to maybe participate this Sunday in the 200th episode of the Go4 tournament in World of Tanks. Um, huge prizes online. Just um, get information over our social media platforms, over the eslgaming.com page, over, um, over at uh, eu.wg league.net sorry if i can't use my um words here so uh, also we announced grand finals uh, the location from for the grand finals this year head over to set web pages to see where it takes place so i don't want to spoil for you huge news written where everything is neatly explained and we will be back next week on monday and 
you won't get rid of us uh, of us the whole week. We'll be there on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday. So it will be a tank-filled week and action-packed and amazing games since we're going into the absolute hot phase of the season. Every every point matters. And people, I hope to see you back on Monday at 6 p.m. CT, uh, 6.30 p.m. CT. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. Stay active on Twitter and Facebook and we'll, we will be back on Monday. Have a nice weekend.